Good morning, Malacanang Press Corps. Welcome to the press briefing of Presidential Spokesperson Harry Walker. Good morning, sir. Good morning to uh, the ladies and gentlemen of the Malacanang Press Corps. Magandang umaga, Pilipinas. Well, uh, ngayong umaga po, binibigyan ko po ng konfirmasyon na ang Executive Secretary po ay uh, nakatanggap na ng instruction galing kay Presidente na magbigay notice no, sa UN SecGen na tayo po ay uh, magbibitiw uh, sa Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. The Executive Secretary will implement immediately the President's Directive through proper diplomatic procedure in coordination with the Department of Foreign Affairs. Let me devote some time on this issue because um, um, all that I could state yesterday was to confirm that a directive has been issued. Now, the decision to withdraw is because the ICC prosecutor violated the very basis by which the Philippines and 124 other countries gave their consent to become members of the ICC. This is the principle of complementarity. Ang ICC po, hindi po yan ang court of first instance. Yan po ay binuo ng mga kasapi ng ICC kasama ang Pilipinas para maging court of last resort. Gagalaw lang po dapat ang ICC kapag ang mga lokal na hukuman ay hindi gumagana. Sa kaso po ng Pilipinas, malinaw na malinaw, gumagana po ang ating mga hukuman at hindi po po pwedeng makaiwas sa pananagutan ang kahit sino kasama na po ang isang presidente. Alam naman po natin sa, sa Pilipinas na yung immunity ay habang sila ay nakaupo lamang, dalawang presidente na po ang kinulong natin immediately after ng kanilang termino. Patunay po na walang such a thing as immunity to anyone dito sa ating Pilipinas. Importante po kasi itong consent na ibinigay natin dahil wala naman pong bansa na voluntaryong magsusurrender ng kanilang soberenya at kasapi po sa soberenya yung pag yung jurisdiction ng mga hukuman na lumitis dun sa mga lumalabag sa batas ng Pilipinas at sa, at sa batas na pang-international. I hasten to add that in the Philippines, not only do we have a functioning judiciary, and I think no one can dispute that, uh, we also have a domestic statute no? which mirrors the crimes cognizable by the International Criminal Court. Ang pag-withdraw uh, po natin sa ICC, ay dahil nalabag yung ating um, basihan kung bakit tayo pumayag na maging uh, um, miyembro ng ICC at ito po ay dahil um, ang dapat na maglitis at pag-imbestiga kay Presidente kung merong saysay ang mga demanda na yan ay ang ating mga lokal na hukuman. Uulitin ko po, wala naman po dun sa 124 countries na kasapi ng ICC na pumayag na hindi nagagana ang kanilang mga domestic na mga hukuman. Lahat po sila pumayag. Pero... Court of Last Resort lang po ang ICC. Ang Court of Primary Jurisdiction should be domestic courts. Now, I've been asked many times about the fact that I was at the forefront of the campaign to um, uh, then convince President Aquino to sign up for the ICC. I can confirm this. In fact, perhaps I was the strongest lobbyist for membership in the ICC. I have no regrets for doing so as I believe that there must be an end to impunity. But when I lobbied for Philippine membership into, membership into the ICC, it was because I knew it cannot be a substitute for domestic courts. Importante nga lang po na magkaroon tayo ng alternatibo kung hindi na gumagana ang mga lokal na mga hukuman. How do I feel about it? I'm already spokesperson. I have no personal opinion. But in this instance, I will make an exception. Yes, it saddens me because our membership to the ICC perhaps is my single most important achievement as a member of civil society. But I agree with the President. Hindi naman po po pwede isang, na isang tabi yung soberenya at saka yung basihan ng consent to be bound dahil lamang sa gawain ng prosecutor. Hindi ko po ito sinasabi ngayon lang. Kung sinubaybayan niyo po yung sinabi ko sa meeting ng Assembly of State Parties, nag-warning na po ako doon na huwag sana magpagamit sa mga politiko ang prosecutor dahil kung hindi po, kapag linabag ng prosecutor yung principle of complementarity, hindi po mag aatubili ang Pilipinas na uh, umalis sa International Criminal Court at narito na nga po tayo sa puntong ito, nagkaroon na ng desisyon ang ating presidente. Now, ang tingin ko po, mas maraming mawawala sa International Criminal Court sa ating pag-alis. Bakit po? Sa Southeast Asia, dadalawa na lang pong natitirang countries na miyembro na ICC. Timor-Leste at saka Cambodia. 
wala na pong ibang bansa na talagang aktibo sa uh, pag-iimbita, pag-iingganyo sa ibang mga bansa sa Asia na maging kasapi ng ICC. Ngayong lumabas na po tayo, wala na ibang bansa na mag sa Asia na sumapi ang ibang mga bansa sa Asia sa International Criminal Court. But this is a decision that um, this is a development that the, the prosecutor should have considered when she decided to embark on preliminary examination. Sa akin po, mas malaki ang talo ng ICC at ng uh, um, quest for justice sa buong daigdig dahil sa paglabag na ginawa ng prosecutor na wala na po ng pinakamalakas na aliado uh, sa kontinente ng Asia ang International Criminal Court dahil wala na pong um, magiging kasing lakas na supporter na bansa sa Asia kung hindi ang Pilipinas. So, to the ICC, to the Assembly of State Parties, they only have to thank um, the prosecutor for the end of our dream to achieve universal ratification for the ICC. My only hope is that this will not lead into an avalanche of countries wanting to get out from the ICC. Note that three other countries have given notice to withdraw from the ICC. One actually withdrew, Burundi, two others relented, but they have not said that their decision not to leave is permanent. Questions? First question, Marisel Halili, TV5. Hi, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Sir, yung tungkol po sa ICC, does it automatically mean na dismiss na rin yung preliminary examination following yung pag-withdraw natin sa Rome Statute? Nakapagtataka nga po because talagang napakadaming ekspertong lumabas. Sa katunayan po, po pwede po tayong umalis at mawawalang bisa po ang kaso o yung preliminary examination na sinimulan. Bakit po? Kasi ang preliminary examination, hindi naman po yan actual stage sa International Criminal Court. Pero may possibility bang magpatuloy? Meron din po. Kailan pwede magpatuloy yan? Kung sa loob na isang taon at meron pong one-year withdrawal process, ay mag-proceed sa preliminary investigation ang prosecutor, po pwede pong matuloy. Pero kapag hindi po siya nag-proceed within one year sa preliminary investigation, mababaliwala na po yung kaso o yung preliminary examination na sinimulan ng prosecutor. So ngayon po, walang kasiguruduhan. Ang katotohanan po niyan, bagamat ang dami ng mga ekspertong nagsasalita, hindi pa po natin alam kung ano maging epekto dyan doon sa preliminary examination kasi isang taon nga po yung withdrawal process. Now, ganun pa man, Malinaw po ang sinasabi ng presidente nang hinding-hindi niya kikilalanin ang jurisdiksyon ng ICC sa kanyang pagkatao dahil mavaviolate yung kanyang karapatan to due process dahil hindi nga na-publish ng gobyerno daw ni uh, Presidente Aquino yung ICC Rome Statute in full. No? Now, um, that's of course a recognized principle in our domestic law. That's in the Constitution and because international law automatically forms part of the laws of the land, the latest decision of the Supreme Court on the matter, Magaliona versus Executive Secretary, says that the Constitution must prevail. Now, impossible rin po magkaroon ng jurisdiction over the person of the President. Sabihin na nating masampahan siya ng, kasa, ng kaso. Yung pag-aaresto po sa Presidente depends wholly on cooperation. I don't think the Philippines will ever surrender him to the International Criminal Court. Sino po magpapasurrender sa kanya? Idadalawa lang yung bansa dito sa Southeast Asia, Timor Leste and Cambodia. So unless pupunta po doon ang presidente na may kaso na siya sa um, International Criminal Court, eh, hindi naman po siya maaresto. At ngayon po, merong isang presidente na kinasuhan um, ng ICC, gumagala-gala po sa mga teritoryo ng member parties, hindi rin inaaresto. So ang nangyari po rito, nagmumukhang inuti lang ang ICC sa ginawa ng kanyang prosecutor, mali po yung ganyang hakbang. Dahil ako po talaga, I would have seen a strong and credible ICC na na-undermine po ni uh, prosecutor dahil dito sa kanyang walang saysay na ginawang ng preliminary examination knowing na napakalakas naman ng hudikatura at ng sistema ng katarungan dito sa Pilipinas. Sir, does it mean that we will still uh, follow Article 127 of the Rome Statute? Kasi nakalagay dun sa letter kahapon uh, na one year upon notice yung, yung pwede tayo mag-withdraw. But then again, sabi ni Secretary Sal Panelo, effective immediately na raw yung withdrawal. So, which All is I can confirm sir? is Pacta Sun Servanda. Of course, we recognize the principle no? applicable to withdrawal. Um, but the president from the beginning has said they will never acquire jurisdiction over his person. So this is actually a question which is mutan academic. Kahit ano pang gawin ng ICC, 
hindi hindi magpapasailalim ng jurisdiction ang Presidente Duterte. Sir, some critics are saying that this is uh, parang a sign of cowardice on the part of Malacanang because you're not willing to participate on the Unang procedure. Unang-una po, hindi natin sinabi na hindi na tayo magpaparticipate. Ang sinabi lang natin, hindi magkakaroon ng jurisdiction sa pagkatao ni Presidente. Pangalawa, hindi po Pilipinas lang ang umalis sa ICC. May tatlo na pong nagbigay ng notice, isa tuluyan ng umalis, Burundi. Yun din po yung estado ata ng uh, prosecutor kung hindi ako nagkakamali. Baka mangkamali ako dyan, I'm not sure. Pero alam ko, isa sa tatlong bansa na nagbigay ng notice ay yung bansa mismo ng prosecutor. No? Um, at um, pangatlo po, hindi naman po universal ratification. Hindi po lahat ng bansa sa daigdig ay miyembro. Ang Estados Unidos hindi po miyembro niyan. Dahil nga, ang Estados Unidos sa mula't mula, hindi po gusto na napakakapangyarihan ng uh, prosecutor po pwede siyang uh, magsimula ng preliminary examination, nagiging political issue domestically, and yet wala namang pananagutan yung prosecutor. Ito po talaga ang dahilan kung bakit sa mula't mula ang sabi ng mga Amerikano hindi sila magiging miyembro na ICC because the prosecutor has absolutely no um, um, accountability to anyone at Yan nga po ang nangyari sa kaso natin. No? Binigyan niya ng bala ang mga politika na kalaban ng uh, ating presidente. Pinulitisize niya ang proseso. At hindi po yung pag-alis ng presidente ang makaka-apekto doon sa ICC. Yung action po na ginawa ng uh, prosecutor na linabag niya mismo yung prinsipyo ng complementarity. Show of hands. Sino ba ho talaga nagsasabi na hindi gumagana ang hukuman sa ating bayan? Sige nga po dito sa press corps. Sino po magsasabi niyan? Wala po, for the record. So, hindi ko po talaga maintindihan anong pumasok na espiritu dyan sa prosecutor na yan at sinabi niya na domestic courts are, the Philippine courts are unable and unwilling. Sir, last, um, how will this affect, sir, the impression of the international community sa, sa Pilipinas following yung ating uh, action? Aren't you concerned of the hindi possible... Hindi po. Ang Amerika hindi membro ng ICC. May epekto ba yan sa imahe ng Amerika? Wala po. Ang Russia, hindi po miyembro ng ICC. May epekto ba yan? Ang China, may epekto ba yan? Again, there are 198 countries in this planet. Only 124 became members. Less two now, 122. Kasama na po dyan yung mga malilit na bansa ng Pacific, kaya marami. Pero kung titignan nyo po yan, ang composition niya, it's predominantly a European, a Latin American, an African, and Pacific States Court. Wala po halos asya na miyembro ng International Criminal Court. Okay. Pia Gutierrez, ABS-CBN, to be followed by Sandra Aguinaldo, Jimmy 7 Sir, hindi lang po ako ng clarification because I, under, uh, I remember, sir, na nagbigay kayo ng uh, uh, explanation dito on the processes yes. ng sa ICC. Pero yung preliminary examination that uh, you are objecting to, isn't that a matter of procedure that because the ICC has received an information that they have to act on it? Hindi po. Meron po nagdemanda laban sa Santo Papa for sexual abuses. Hindi naman po nag-preliminary examination ang prosecutor. Bagamat hindi po ito kabahagi pa ng formal na proseso, ito po ay isang mensahe no? na uh, isa sa mga kaso na pag-aaralan ng prosecutor ito. At sinasabi nga namin, dapat yan, bago pa siya nag-preliminary uh, examination, nalaman na niya na gumagana ang uh, sistema ng uh, katarungan dito sa Pilipinas. But, pero sir, you, wouldn't the aim of the preliminary examination uh, is to determine whether they have jurisdiction over the case. That may be the case. Wrong political move, Madam Prosecutor, and I'm addressing you wherever you are. You just gave countries confirmation on why they should not become a member of the ICC because you have shown that you can exercise your power without accountability. You are to blame if the ICC uh, will become part of his history. You are to blame if ICC becomes part of the dustbin of history. So for the record, sir, ano po ba dapat ang ginawa ng prosecutor? Dismiss uh, outright yan. Dahil alam naman niya gumagana mga hukuman. Hello, alam na alam ng lahat ng tao ang partisipasyon ko sa ratification ng ICC. Alam nilang may nakaupo tayong hukom sa ICC. Alam nila yung mga sudyante ko e eh, prosecutors dyan sa ICC. Alam nilang estado ng katarungan dito sa Pilipinas. So kung talagang in-apply niya ang prinsipyo ng complementarity, hindi niya ginalaw yan. Ginalaw niya yan, yan ay patunay na pinupolitika niya ang ating presidente. Lalong-lalo na ang naghain, politiko. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that a case is politicized when a politician has filed it. It should have been thrown to the wastebasket instantly.
Sir, another question. Nabanggit po dun sa statement ni Presidente kahapon that the Rome Statute is not enforceable in the Philippines because it was not published in the official gazette or a newspaper of general I can circles. confirm that's the personal conviction of the President that's pursuant to the case of Tanyada versus Tuvera. Pero sir, um, following that uh, um, thinking sir, ano pa po ba mga international treaties ang hindi enforceable sa Pilipinas dahil hindi siya na-publish? Well, alam niyo po, ito kasi kakaiba kasi ito lang yung um, um, tratado na nagbibigay parusa sa mga krimen. So this being criminal in nature, it should have been published. Now, because of your question, yes, the only other treaty that I know, hindi eh, wala eh, kasi even the torture convention enjoins member states to come up with domestic legislation um, criminalizing torture. So sa pagkakaalam ko po, um, yung Convention Against Genocide, ganun din po. Kinakailangan bumuo ng mga batas na uh, pinaparusahan ng genocide. Ito lang po talaga yung tratado na nagbibigay ng isang criminal code na kinakailangan talaga na napublish for due process sake. So sino sir dapat ang magpapublish nun? Isn't that the government dapat? That should have been done by President Aquino since he ratified it. Okay. Sandra Aguinaldo, GMA7. Sir, clarify ko lang. So, um, your opinion is that um, yung Article uh, 127, uh, yung withdrawal na one-year period, uh, for you, uh, even as we speak, dapat hindi na nila, hindi na umuusad yung kaso po sa ICC. Well, mag apply pa lang yung pong 127 kung may actual kaso na po. Wala pa po. Ang actual kaso rito begins with preliminary investigation. And since there's no preliminary investigation, if there is none conducted within a year, tapos na po, patay na itong kaso na sinampa ng mga politiko labang kay Presidente sa ICC. Mm -hmm. So yung opinion ni Representative uh, Tino na parang uh, yung one-year notice na yon ay pwede pang magpatuloy po uh, o gubulong no, yung complaint against the President. Well, uh, obviously, what is your this is not just a uh, difference in opinion. I think this now entails for professional legal opinion, which he cannot give. Not only is this an issue of law, this is an issue of specialized law in the field of international criminal law. So I would not argue against someone who is not even capable of giving an ordinary legal opinion. Okay, Leila Salaveria, Inquirer. Good morning. Sir, what changed between, your state, uh, between February when you said that the president is willing to face the ICC and this month when he decided to withdraw our ratification of the, the statement of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Particularly? Um, asking him to see a psychiatrist. With that statement, the President is convinced that there must be some kind of a conspiracy on the part of pressure groups and UN um, officials no, to shame him. No? Because uh, prior to that statement of the, uh, um, the Prince of Jordan, no, he says, I have nothing to hide. No? But of course, even in our initial briefing, I did say that I spoke, and he knew I spoke in New York upon his instruction to warn the ICC that politicizing the ICC will result in our decision to leave the court. That is exactly what I said in the United Nations Assembly of State Parties of the ICC in New York last December. So it is, it's just implementing a policy statement that we delivered in the UN. Sir, why are you blaming the ICC for the statement of the High Commissioner for Human Rights? Well, uh, you know, let me be clear. No, it's not just the the Prince; it's also the U. Uh, Agnes Calamard. It seems that, as far as the President is concerned, there is like concerted effort on the part of lobby groups, no, to influence UN officials, no, to um, indict and convict the President in the court of public opinion. That's what it is. It's a concerted effort to convict him in the court of public opinion, and he will not have anything to do with that. But sir, isn't the ICC independent from the UN? It is. It is. But the perception is it's somehow allied still with the uh, United Nations. Um, in fact, the withdrawal mechanism is deposited with the UN Secretary General. No? Although the reason why it's not part of the um, UN, of course, is that not all member states of the UN agreed to become members of the ICC. Only. 124, now 122, I should say. Um, sir, why uh, why did the palace not consult the Senate before deciding? There's the no obligation to do so. But 
the Senate's ratification is needed for yeah, it to be in effect. To become a part of the law of the land. But yeah. is there anything that says that the executive needs to consult with the Senate when we withdraw from a treaty? So None. there's even Senate, uh, former Senate President Ridon has admitted that he tried to adopt a resolution that before we could withdraw from a treaty, there must be Senate concurrence, and it was not acted upon by his colleagues. The reason why the Senate consent is not necessary is the Constitution does not provide it's necessary. That is a decision to be made by the President as Chief Architect of Foreign Policy. Sir, last lang yung dun sa impression of the Philippines in the international community, kasi other countries didn't ratify the Rome Statute, but we ratified it and we withdrew it after the preliminary in examination bega began. So As I said, mean it just proves, perhaps, that the fears of other countries, including the United States, that the, pr the prosecutor is unduly powerful without accountability is probably correct. It has nothing to do, it will not affect our image, because if the United States did not agree to become a member, for reasons now that the president is invoking, then somehow there must be truth behind the policy of the United States not to have joined the ICC. And it's not just the United States, it's Russia, China, and other powerful countries as well. So aren't we just parang appearing to avoid accountability? No, because if it pushes through, the president has, said, has not said that he will not participate. I'm the only Filipino council recognizing the list council. And my suggestion would probably be, let's face it, but let's avoid um, a future instance where the prosecutor will violate the very basis by which states became a part of the ICC. Okay. okay. Rose Cause, uh, UNTV, and then Leo Palo, and then Pia. Good morning, Secretary. Yes. Um, can we uh, assure na pinag-aralang mabuti yung decision po nating mag-withdraw from the Rome Statute? And enough ba yung i-compensate? Sabi nyo nga po, isa kayo sa mga nanindigan para ma-eratify. So... Sa akin po, malinaw na malinaw. Tama po ang decision ng Presidente. Mali po ang prosecutor. Maling mali po yung prosecutor. As I said, ang uh, naging uh, um, halaga po ng ganitong maling decision ay yung possibility na mawawala na pong saysay ang ICC. Tandaan nyo po yan. Napakalaki po ng epekto ng Pilipinas ay miyembro ng ICC. At napakalaki ng epekto, hindi lang sa Asia, kundi sa ibang mga, mga, mga bansa pa nitong pag-aalis natin sa ICC. Wala na pong pag-asa na yung mga karatig bansa natin, Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam, Singapore, ay magiging miyembro ng ICC. Wala na po. Zero. Pero Secretary, um, in case sa hinaharap, hindi po under this administration, ano na magiging deterrent? Or ano na po ang kumbaga last resort if ever yung mga susunod na mga authorities may kakitaan ng severe violation of human rights ano na po magiging hakbang ng Pilipinas kailangan lang naman kasi galangin ng prosecutor yung nakasulat sa tra sa tratado kung gumagana ang hukuman pwede siguro siyang magsalita o mga hukumang lokal gumalaw kayo pero wag siyang maghihimaso kasi talagang walang estado na pumayag sana maging miyembro ng ICC kung alam nila na mababali wala ang kanilang mga lokal na hukuman. Ano ba yung mga bansa na nalilitis na ng ICC? Somalia, Sudan, mga walang gumaganang mga gobyerno, Libya, at saka yung mga kasong nag, nag, na, na, na po prosecute talaga dyan, at least dalawa, Security Council po ng UN ang nagsabi, nag-refer ng kaso dyan. So makikita nyo po na ang practice ng hukuman kung hindi na i-refer ng UN Security Council o hindi na i-refer ng mga bansa mismo na kasapi ng uh, ICC, eh, hindi naman magkakaroon ng jurisdiction ng ICC. Hindi po pumayag ang Pilipinas na maging husga ang ICC prosecutor sa gawain ng isang presidente. Lokal na hukuman pa rin po ang dapat mag dyan. Hindi po tayo umiiwas sa pananagutan ng sinasabi lang natin, igalang ang soberenya natin dahil hindi naman tayo pumayag na babali walain natin ang soberenya natin. Last na lang po, sorry. Okay. Pero meron din po bang chance na i-reverse yung decision ng withdrawal? I can only say that two other countries that gave notice have so far relented and have not pushed through with their withdrawal. One of them is South Africa. We will see what happens. Okay. Leo? Sir, una, um, sabi mo kanina malaki ang epekto. So, ano ay epekto direkta sa mga sasambayan ng Pilipino? Pangalawa, sabi well, po... Well, sasambayan ng Pilipino po, wala. Okay. Ang epekto po niyan, doon sa kagustuhan 
ng ICC na magkaroon ng universal ratification. Ang universal, universal ratification, eh para lahat po ng bansa sa mundong ito na maging miyembro ng ICC. Eh ngayon nga lang po, 122 na lamang ang natitira at yung mga malalaking bansa hindi pa nagmiyembro. Sir, pangalawa lang. Sabi ni Senator Tellianes, kaya daw inatras ni Pangulo itong uh, sa ICC dahil guilty. Ano hindi po. Inatras po yan dahil pinulitika ng uh, prosecutor ang kanyang desisyon dahil kung hindi niya pinulitika yan, eh alam niyang dapat binasura ang reklamo ng isang politiko laban sa ating presidente. Okay. Just a follow up and then Pia. Yes. Sir, so ibig sabihin marami pang susunod na mga bansa na sa tingin niyo ay Sa tingin ko po unang-una, wala nang bagong bansa na papasok dyan. Kasi alam niyo yung imahe ng Pilipinas, tayo talaga yung... Kumbaga, we are recognized as probably the number one defender of human rights and democracy in the world. No? At pagdating dito sa ICC, napakalaki talaga ng tiwala na binigay na hukuman sa amin, mga civil society, na uh, kumbinsihin yung mga gobyerno ng daigdig na sumapi. Pero sa development pong ito, malabo na talaga na mapapayag pati yung ating mga best friends dito sa Southeast Asia na sumapi sa ICC. So sir, parang narinawa na na Tapos na ang colonial mentality. Well, yan po ang sinabi rin ng uh, ating Pangulo kasi nga ang kritisismo rin ng mga African states kaya sila umaalis. Eh ang mga nagpapaprosecute naman sa kanila yung mga dati nilang mga colonial masters na Euro European countries. Now, ang ginawa ni, ni prosecutor siguro pakitang gilas kasi yan nga yung pula ng mga African countries at dahilan kung bakit tatlo sa kanila ay eh, nagbigay ng notice na alis sila no? na it is a European court. Yung kanilang mga colonial masters na nagsasabi ditisin yung itong mga bansang ito. No? Um, at pag nagsalita po ang presidente tungkol dito, sigurado po ako sasabihin niya that this is the last vestige of European colonialism dahil European naman talaga ang naghahari-harian dito sa ICC. So sa tingin niyo sir, pagbagsak na ng ICC? Tingin ko po, simula na itong prosesong ito, nakakalungkot po. But the, this, the, the, this development is not because of the president's decision. It is the act of the prosecutor in disregarding complementarity. Okay, Pia? At pag-uusapan po ito dahil nung ako naman ay nagpunta doon sa Assembly of State Parties, lahat sila nakikinig sa ating pronouncement. Nagalak sila nung panahon na yon inaasahan nila, bibitiw na tayo. Pero sabi ng Pangulo, bigyan naman natin sila ng notisya. No? And since we've already given notice, nangyari na nga po. I can assure you, this is the single most important development in the life of the court itself. Sir, kung yung problema lang po natin ay yung actions na isang prosecutor, couldn't... Why couldn't the Philippines have just filed a complaint against her or at least argued the jurisdiction issue in the courts? Hindi po kami, yun nga ang nangyari eh. Even if preliminary examination is not an official part of um, court procedure yet, nagkaroon na ng political ano, mileage yung mga kalaban ni Presidente. Yan po yung sinasabi natin na napolitika. Pinupolitika. At yan din yung sinasabi ni Secretary Alan Cayetano na we're politicizing and weaponizing human rights. Ginagamit na ng instrumento to para ma-influensahan yung mga hindi gustong mga leaders ng ilang mga bansa. No? So yan po ang tinututulan natin ngayon. Ulitin ko po, ako mismo, ako siguro ang pinakamalungkot dahil ako yung pinaka-aktibo. Wala na po siguro mas aktibo pang nag-kampanya nag, uh, para sa ratification. Pero maling-mali po talaga ang ginawa ng prosecutor. At um, sana po wag na maulit ito. And the message is, kung talagang gusto natin na mas maraming bansa na sumapi, igalang natin kung anong nakasaad sa tratado mismo. So sir, the, an action of one prosecutor is enough for us to um, assume that the ICC is politicized? Yes, Pia. Because that's the very reason countries like the US, Russia, and China have refused to join the non-accountability of the prosecutor. Sir, you were mentioning about lobby groups. Sino-sino po ito uh, sa palagay po ng uh, Pangulo? At uh, kasama po ba dito yung opposition sa mga lobby groups na ito? Well, alam niyo po, syempre, no? alam niyo naman kasi, kayo naman, kayo mga mamabatas, alam niyo naman yung mga international lobby groups always ally themselves with opposition groups. No? So marami po yung mga, trad, ano na naman niya, established naman niya. Nandiyan yung mga human rights organizations and their funders. No? Um, I'm not begrudging it. Karapatan naman ng mga mayayamang sumuporta sa mga lobby groups. But alam natin na it's the same lobby groups no, who have successfully lobbied the Office of Prosecutor also to proceed at least with preliminary examination. Siguro sa isipan ni prosecutor, preliminary examination lang naman. Well, that's a fatal mistake. 
she should have weighed the policy implication of the Philippines withdrawing from the ICC from appeasing lobby groups. I put the blame squarely on the prosecutor. Sir, can you identify the lobby groups? Well, marami po yan. Sino ba yan? Human Rights Watch, Amnesty, sino nagpopondo, no? I acknowledge, I've even worked with that group, no? but it's the OSI group. Yan naman yung mga nagpopondo talaga ng uh, human rights groups. And they have a very strong lobby in the human, UN human rights bodies, including the ICC, because the difference nga is I, I, um, civil society representatives are allowed to attend ICC proceedings. As in fact, I have gone many times to the ICC Assembly of State Parties as part of the civil society delegation. Local political parties, sir, kasama ba? Ay, mga local political parties naman sumasakay lang dyan. But alam naman natin na yung, yung pamahalaan po ni uh, Presidente Aquino talagang sumapi po dun sa Open Governance Initiative ng Open Society Institute, no? Or OSI. Thank you, sir. Okay, Hannah Sancho, Sunshine Radio, and then Joanna of Inquire.net. Sir, um, just a reaction na sinabi ng isang law expert na uh, maging disadvantage daw for Filipinos abroad yung non-membership daw po natin sa ICC. Nag-ingat naman tayo sa mga pagbabagapit ng titulong expert. No? Hindi po totoo yan. Gaya ng sinabi ko, no? kapag ang UN Security Council po nag-refer ng isang bagay sa ICC, yan po sigurado lahat masasakop. No? So... Ano naman pong advantage natin? Eh, karamihan naman ng mga bansa kung saan nagtatrabaho ang ating mga migrant workers, hindi rin miyembro ng ICC. Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, hindi naman po yung miyembro ng ICC. Eh. Wala nga tayong makuwang remedyo dahil kakaunti lang naman ang mga estado ang miyembro ng ICC. So walang magiging epekto? Wala Masamang po. epekto dun sa mga ang, ang, ang mabuti naman po dyan, whether or not you're a member of the ICC, kapag uh, Security Council lang nag-refer ng matter, eh, iimbisigahan at iimbisigahan po yan ng hukuman. Okay, Joanna. Hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Sir, a reaction na po tungkol sa sinabi ni Attorney Bagares on uh, social media na uh, on the publication of the treaty at the uh, official gazette. He said po na there's this doctrine of transformation uh, the, which uh, states that an international treaty automatically becomes a, a part of domestic law upon concurrence of the Senate. So, uh, wala ng uh, requirement to, uh, to be published uh, sa official gazette. Can Kasama you expound on this? Kasama ko po na nag-argue ng kaso ng Magaliona versus Executive uh, Secretary si Romel Bagares, ang sabi nga ng Korte Suprema, hindi po pwedeng um, mag-supersede ng uh, saligang batas ang isang tratado because it is only a law. So, ang sinasabi po ng Presidente, yung publication is part of due process rights in the Bill of Rights. And of course, even if it has become a law in the Philippines, it cannot supplant a substantive right recognized by the Bill of Rights itself. But, but on the need to be published po sa official gazette, uh, there's this doctrine of transformation. Ay, po, what, okay you, po yan kung hindi penal in character. But this is penal in character. It makes a whole world of a difference. In fact, ito lang huata ang tratado na criminal in nature. Kasi yung mga ibang tratado nga na sinabi ko sa inyo, torture, genocide, the obligation there is to criminalize torture and genocide under domestic law. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Other issues? Okay. Last three questions for other issues. Leila. Sir, on the drug charges against Lim and Espinosa, sir, how can the palace not know about it when regularly uh, nag-meeting naman sa palasya about the drug or... What do you mean? How do we Hindi not know about it? <laughs> you know, that's why we have line agencies. No? That's why the president... Uh, um, tells all the secretaries, no, do what uh, should be done, and the president always emphasizes, wala nga siyang kontrata na pinakikialaman. No? So I don't think it's, a, it's an issue that the president did not know about it, but when the president found out, he made his sentiments very clear. Now, whether or not the president really said what I tweeted, he did. Whether or not it should be taken literally by Secretary Aguirre, I will repeat what I have often said. Even if you don't take the president literally, you take him all the time seriously. So I think what the President said is a very clear expression of concern that he will not allow suspected drug lords to go scot-free. So I'm just wondering, because we meeting about the drug wars in Palacio, so, and the no, persons the, involved are high-profile suspects. The DOJ never attends the command conference. It's the PNP and the AFP. Yeah, even the, about cabinet meetings, sir? We so never discussed uh, individual cases. cases. No, that's not the way to govern. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, the president will we should um, have concurrently, head concurrently already the DOJ. 
walang nagtaka na the person they testified against, the Lima, is already in jail. Tapos wala pang nafo-file na kaso against them. Hindi ko maintindihan nga kung ano yung relasyon ng de Lima rito. E, iba naman ang kaso ni de Lima sa kaso nitong dalawang to. Hindi naman implied si de Lima dyan. Hindi ko maintindihan ba't nila pilit na liniling si de Lima. Si de Lima nakarating na ng Korte Suprema kung tama ba yung mga charges sa kanya. Sabi ng Korte Suprema, tama, mag-proceed sa trial. O ito nasa level pa lang ng piskalya. Sir, does the President still trust the Justice Secretary? He said so. But as I said, while you don't take the President literally, you must take him seriously. He could consider this as a joke, and in fact, he was rather jokingly, he said it in a rather jokingly manner. But from the almost six months now that I've worked closely with the President, he doesn't waste words. Unlike me, I'm very verbose, no? but the President does not waste words. I think the message is he's not happy with the decision. Okay, uh, sir, we just have a phone-in question from Pia Renada of Rappler. She's asking, President Duterte appointed Aristotle Reyes as regional trial court judge in September. Reyes is the DOJ prosecutor who cleared Nicanor Faeldon of charges, as well as Peter Lim and Kerwin Espinosa. Was his promotion in any way linked to these dismissals? I don't think so, and it's far-fetched. Okay, Tina Mendez, Philippine Star. If at all, if the President knew that he cleared... Uh, these individuals, he probably would not have been appointed. So I think the question is, has a wrong premise. Yes. Sir, hello. Uh, earlier today, si former President Aquino uh, nag-issue nag ng statement sa COMELEC. Uh, hindi raw electioneering yung pag approve ng nila ng Dembaxia vaccine. At saka bereft of truth and uh, puro katang isip lang daw ang final sa kanya sa COMELEC. Any comment from the palace? We leave, um, we leave this matter to the COMELEC because under the Constitution, it is a COMELEC that has supervision and control over all election-related activities, including the power to conduct preliminary investigation for election offenses. Okay. Hannah? Sir, any update doon sa ilalabas niyo sa MRT issue po? Dami na naman natin balita. Next week na. Okay. Kasi sinabi ni... Overload na nga tayo ng balita. Pag wala ng balita, tsaka po ilalabas. Alright. Sir, uh, asa na lang sir. Sabi ni Bitanggol, sir, wala daw credibility yung mga whistleblowers na ilalabas niyo daw po. Paano niya alam? Hindi naman niya alam kung sino yung mga whistleblowers ko. No? Hindi ko nga siya nakakausap eh. No? Mm. Okay. Another, I, sir, may phone-in question po, sir, uh, from Ms. Eileen Taliping po. Nawawala ang phone-in <laughs> question. Ito po, sir. Sir, may umayari daw ng West Cove sa Boracay. Si Crisostom Aquino has appealed the cancellation ng Forest Land Use Agreement for Tourism Purposes, covering his resort sa Office of the President where it remains pending. Will this affect yung ginagawa ngayon ng mga hakbang to rehabilitate the island? I hope not. Because the decision that they are in breach of environmental laws, as far as I know, is immediately executory. You know? So, um, and I think um, the uh, DILG and DNR have said that they will demolish West Cove. The last that I heard is that the um, local um, government may even ask the president for assistance to call in the marines if need be no so when i heard that report i told them send the letter because i'm sure the president will not hesitate to send in the marines and even use dynamites to uh, blow up that uh, illegal structure there okay last two questions ace romero and then pia Secretary, you mentioned that the President still trusts uh, Justice Secretary Aguirre, but then meron siyang na-mention na pag nakawala yung mga suspects, siya yung ipapalit. Meron bang kahit paano nagkaroon na ng doubts si Presidente kay Justice Secretary? Hindi ko po alam. Pero ang sinasabi ko nga lang is, my motto is, always take the President seriously. Siguro po, the trust remains dahil kung hindi naman, sisisantihin po siya ng Presidente. And the president has not hesitated to fire even members of the cabinet. For as long as he has not been fired, he enjoys the, pres the trust and confidence of the president. So, parang as you know, as is the case with all of us. So, sinasabi nyo, uh, you, you, he should still take 
the president's word seriously? I think he has. Mm -hmm. That's why he has already taken steps to create a new investigation panel. No? Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you, Secretary. Okay, Pia. Sir, labor groups are saying that today would be the day that the president will be issuing an EO uh, ending endo. Any news on that, sir? At least, an, or at least an assurance that uh, an order is forthcoming. I do not know anything about that. All I know is that it's Aron and Davao, and I'm leaving tonight for Davao. <laughs> And also, sir, the president, uh, sabi po ni Secretary Martin and Denar, uh, the president has declared his support. Uh, should you run for senator, ano po ang sagot niyo dyan, sir? Are you I've, running for senator, sir? I've responded to that. I really thank the president. I, it is an honor, but I need 500 million pesos. So unless he's willing to give me 500 million, all I can say is thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, MPC. Thank you, Secretary Harry Roque, Presidential Spokesperson. And uh, back, to, back to the main studio of PTV4 and Radio Pilipinas. Thank you. See you Monday. Thursday is really my Friday.